back to uh, news from the host. I'm here today with uh, Shane Nolan, uh, Senior Vice President of IDA Ireland. Shane, you're very welcome and thank you for making the time Thanks, to Kevin. join us for Thanks our for Global um, Partner Summit here in uh, Dublin. So Shane, we've met many times over the years. We've seen the evolution of Ireland Inc. from mainframes to mini computers and now to being a tier one hosting center. Um, the IDA must be very proud. Yeah, like I think, um, and I think the beauty of it is, during that evolution, the industry worked with us to drive that growth. Mm. Um, I think I'm struck sometimes by what investors say to us that they say, you know, we chat to IDA and we chat to all the other stakeholders in the data center industry. You all see the world the same way. <laughs> you all tell us the same things, and that's that's immensely comfortable and comforting. Yeah. You know, as you start about deciding where you're going to spend multiple hundreds of millions on investment that's really going to stick around for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we've, um, you know, I think that the growth has been, you know, very, very encouraging and um, satisfying. Mm. Um, it's and interesting when you, when you say that, because uh, often when we go to the United States in particular, you know, uh, challenges of success are way better to have than challenges of some of the other less successful uh, environments and, and obviously when you've got such a pedigree now as Ireland has for the hosting of data you know it, it's uh, what we do next I guess and now the fact that you and I are sitting here today and we're talking about you know state and, and, and industry uh, exploring what needs to be done do you get that always everywhere or is there in your experience no and I think um, again what our clients are telling us is um, they find we take a very pragmatic approach to these challenges. You know, they find in some locations, if there are challenges, the fact that there are challenges becomes an issue within that kind of group of stakeholders where they say, when they come to Ireland, they, they feel that in Ireland, they recognize that fast growth um, that's infrastructure led will create capacity challenges and, you know, carrying capacity challenges. And Ireland says, okay, this was all, there's always a chance this is going to happen. What are we going to do about it? Mm. Um, and you know, they, they find that we we panic less uh, when it comes to constraints like that. And the beauty of being a small country is um, you can um, decide what needs to be done pretty quickly. Mm. Um, mm. The stakeholder community, both government and, and industry, is pretty concentrated. Mm. Um, and you know, uh, there are a number of initiatives currently being run by our Taoiseach or our Prime Minister's office around making the um, uh, the planning permission and the permitting process more straightforward for a data centre investment mm -hmm. uh, because as the leader of the country, he recognises the commercial benefit mm. uh, of data centres to Ireland. And only this morning, I think it was announced that uh, by the end of 2019, there's a possibility Ireland will be back to full employment again. Yeah, potentially. and. Um, that's great because um, it's not too long ago that we had 15% unemployment. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I think what's good about Ireland is everybody in the community, wherever they live or whatever job they're involved or whatever part of the community they're in, understands the benefit of foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. Whereas our, our clients tell us in some countries they go into, there's almost a protectionist attitude. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, your success is at the expense of our um, indigenous captains of industry um, and that they see it as kind of... Uh, a zero-sum game, whereas in Ireland, um, the multinational community is very much embedded in industry and there's a lot of collaboration yeah. between indigenous community and, and multinational. But also as well, when you get to almost full employment, um, where is growth going to come from? Um, thankfully, we still have a, an increasing birth rate, uh, mm -hmm. which bodes well for the future. But also, uh, our clients tell us that the Irish government is a very progressive approach when it comes to immigration. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you need, you know, the government has done a good job, I think, in... in uh, positioning the economic benefit of having very smart people from other countries come and live in Ireland and set down roots here. Mm. Um, because believe me, that is not the case in many other countries. Sure. Um, yeah. And so you have that on one hand, you know, is Ireland a welcoming country and is the government bought into it? And very much so. Mm. And that's the experience that our clients are telling us. But also is the legislation and is the immigration system uh, fit for purpose? Um, and while it can always be quicker, um, our clients tell us it's one of the most effective that they've ever come across. A guy told me recently, he said, one of the great advantages of having English as your native is that there can be no ambiguity if things go wrong that you didn't understand what I said. Absolutely, yeah. And English is, you know, the official language of business and, yeah. you know, where you have, 
you know, different languages speaking to each other, English is always the meta language. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the common language. And the so, legal eagles, they come in, they like the common law. Common law environment, know, yeah. It's a common law. Um, and, and a very effective commercial litigation system yeah. as well. And a very well regarded commercial court if things ever, you know, go that way. Yeah. Um, but I think you yeah, seem to be enjoying your work, Shane. It's, it's, it's rewarding. We yeah. get to work with the best companies in the world. Yeah. Ireland has an ability to track the be, attract the best technology companies in the world. Mm. And um, it, it's an honor and a pleasure to, to work with them all. Mm. And that said, it, it's very competitive yeah. to win investment from these countries. But our product is very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you seem to you seem in the particularly in the space that you're in, it's so varied. I mean, what what industry isn't in the tech consumer data industry? If you're if you're not in it, you won't be in business. Yeah, period. massively, yeah. and um, I think a lot of businesses is, are are being transformed and will be transformed with digitization and uh, and AI. Mm. Uh, particularly, service industry. We're doing a lot of work with the shared services industry at the moment around enabling them, them to embrace automation. Um, so some industries are, are, and countries are taking the approach, well, automation is going to destroy jobs, so how do we protect against that? Mm. Uh, whereas we're taking very much a, a, hopefully, a progressive approach where we're saying, how do we embrace that uh, and embrace it in a way where we control the, the, the period of time it takes to transition to this mm -hmm. new reality? Mm -hmm. So if we are faced with a, a situation in Ireland where 20% of all service workers find that their role is automated, um, if we embrace it, we have time then to retrain and redeploy folks into higher value stuff. But what we've been saying earlier is we've, we've been doing this for 60 years. Every decade has its IBM, DEC, Dell, Oracle, Cloud. So it's an evolution. And yeah. uh, I, I thank you for coming in today and I thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. Pleasure. Shane Nolan, the IDA, Senior Vice President of IDA. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks a lot.